The Lucy Show. Starring Lucille Ball. Co-starring Gail Gordon. Pleasure, Doris. You know, I don't get to see enough of you. Oh, I know. It's been ages. Well, oh, you... oh, pardon me, but I forgot to turn on the set and I don't want to miss him. Miss who? Mr. Mooney. Mr. Mooney? Yeah. How come he's appearing on television? Well, it's a public service program and, there, and Mr. Mooney is being interviewed. Yippee. We're in for a real swing in the evening. <laughs> oh. Lucy, do we have to watch him? I do. There is an old Chinese proverb that says, when boss appears on television, secretary better watch, or next day boss get new secretary. <laughs> yeah, but we're missing the slimy monster from outer space. It's a wonderful horror picture. Well, believe me, Mr. Mooney will be just as horrible. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Mooney looks pretty good on television. That's a slimy monster. I got the wrong channel. <laughs> there, there it is. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present our guest, Mr. Theodore J. Mooney. Good evening, Mr. Mooney. Good evening. My topic for tonight's discussion is the value of education in the business world. I feel that education is all important in the business world. It made me what I am today. Oh, come now. Don't blame that on education. <laughs> if I do say so myself, I have a well-rounded background. That comes from sitting on his chair all day. <laughs> My advice to the youth of today is don't be a dropout. Education makes a better person of you. And speaking for myself, it gave me a greater understanding of human nature, which in turn made me thoughtful, compassionate, considerate, kind. Oh! Oh! Good heavens, even the set couldn't take that balloon. Mrs. Carmichael, did you watch me last night on television? Well, yes and no. Uh, what, what do you mean, yes and no? Well, uh, sir, right in the middle of your speech, my picture tube blew out. What a shame. Yes. Oh, you missed a very enlightening speech and a magnificent performance. Oh. It was one of the highlights of the TV season. Well, I can hardly wait for the summer rerun. It also made a great impression on Mr. Cheever, too. Oh? Oh, yes, it inspired him, in fact, to pass a new rule for the bank. A new rule? Oh, that reminds me. I have to dictate a memo on that. Uh, please bring your book. Yes, sir. Let me see. I have it here. I'm ready, sir. Good. Uh, to all department heads, as per Mr. Cheever's instructions, it will immediately become the policy of this bank not to employ anyone who does not have a high school diploma. Uh-oh. What's the matter? Uh, nothing. Oh, yes, there is. When you uh-oh, something is uh-uh. All right, Mrs. Carmichael. Out with it. What is it? Uh, well, well, sir, would you believe that, uh, that I never finished high school? I'd believe you never finished nursery school. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me that you didn't go to high school? Oh, I went. I, I just didn't finish. And you don't have a diploma? No, sir. 
Oh, 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 what a shame. Oh, Mr. Moody, you're not going to fire me, are you? Why, certainly not. Oh, good. Mr. Cheever will fire you. Now, that's not fair. I, I, I was very close to getting my diploma. It, it, it was my senior year, and it was the final week, you know, just time of examinations, and I got the measles. And then, and then the, the next year, I just figured it was too late to go back to school. When it comes to education, it is never too late. Well. If you had any ambition, you'd go back now. Now? Oh, I'd feel ridiculous going back to high school now. You'd feel even more ridiculous being unemployed now. Oh, now, Mr. Mooney. You heard me. I can't go back to school at my age. Oh, yes, you better. No diploma, no job. Oh, Mr. Mooney. No, no, no. <laughs> Pardon me, sir. The admissions office said to give this to the teacher. <laughs> oh, well, uh, that's Mr. Willick over there. Oh. Oh, well, Mr. Willick? Yes. The admissions office said to give that to you. Oh, thank you. Uh, you're going to be a student here? Yes, sir. Oh, well, uh, just uh, take a seat, uh, uh, Lucille. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Sorry, Lucille, I should have told you that seat is broken. Yes, sir. I found it out for myself. Well, uh, uh, just find yourself another seat. Yes, sir. All right, class. Uh, you'll all open your books now to the chapter on equations. It's all finished, sir. Oh, thank you, John. I'm sorry, but this is my seat. Oh, forgive me. I, I had no idea. I just took the first one that I... Oh, I'm sorry. Let me do it for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Oh, my name is Johnny Harris. Oh, hello. I'm, I'm Lucy Carmichael. Hi. 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 Nice to... I beg your pardon, but uh, may I inquire as to exactly what is transpiring back there? I'm terribly sorry, sir. I dropped my books, and, and Johnny picked them up for me, and I'll find another seat. Yes, I wish you would. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, now, class, let's uh, direct our attention to the problem up here on the board. If X... It's very difficult, please, so try to concentrate. Now, if X equals 3 plus the square root of 7... <laughs> Uh, this must be a root of the equation x squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Therefore, what are the values of b and c? Now, does anybody know the answer? Lucille? Well, what's the answer? Oh, I don't know. Well, uh, uh, why, why did you raise your hand? Oh, it wasn't for that. <laughs> or has this changed since I was... <laughs> No, Lucille, that has not changed. You may be excused. <laughs> oh, hi, Alan. Hi, Steve. How's it going? Oh, the same old drag. But we did have some laughs in math class today. I never found anything to laugh at in math. Well, today we did. Some kooky red-headed dame came into class, and you won't believe this, but uh, she was middle-aged. <laughs> oh, you're putting me on. No middle-aged dame is going to go to high school? Believe me, this one was middle-aged. Why, I bet she was almost 30. <laughs> Pardon me.
pardon me, is that seat taken? No. Thank you. <laughs> Class, we have a new student with us today. Will Lucille Carmichael please stand up? You, you're the new student? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I've come back to school to get my diploma. That's very commendable. Thank you. Uh, class, we're going to study anatomy today. <clears throat> oh, Lucille, did you ever take biology? Biology? Yes, yes, ma'am. Do you remember skeletal construction? You mean knowing how he's put together? Yes. <laughs> oh, yes, I, uh, yes, I think I remember that. Well, good. Why don't you come up and show us what you remember about the assembly of human bones? It's been quite a few years since I put any of them together, but I, uh, I think I can remember. I always used to use little memory hints, you know, like 30 days, half September, April, June, and November, and all the rest of 31. You know that one. That, that always helped me. And then I, another one I remember was uh, Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492. Those things always helped me a lot. Well, just show us what you remember about bones. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, let's see. Uh, is it all right if I start down here? Yes, you like. Well, uh, that, that's a toe bone. And the, and the toe bone's uh, connected to the foot bone. And the foot bone's connected to the heel bone. And the heel bone's connected to the ankle bone. And the ankle bone's connected to the shin bone. The shin bone's connected to the and math. Oh, those subjects are a drag. Why don't you take some easier ones, like most of the kids do? What are they taking? Oh, driver's training, ceramics, basket weaving, and volleyball. <laughs> well, it sounds like fun, but I have to take what I need to get my diploma. What happens if you don't get your diploma? Your mama gonna spank you? <laughs> don't get fresh, Steve. That's all right, Patty. Steve! I guess you're just too young to realize the importance of education. Ah, oh, education. Big deal. I don't think that's any way for you to talk. You should be glad of the chance to go to school. You know, she sounds just like my mother. <laughs> no, no. I, I think she's a spy for the PTA. <laughs> Look, I'm just trying to give you kids some good advice, that's all. I think you should study hard and get as much education as you can. What are you, some kind of nut or something? Steve, all I'm Boy, saying... I'm staying away from you. You may be contagious. <laughs> all right, settle down. Let's come to order. <clears throat> I, uh... I marked your homework papers last night. And, uh, most of you did very well. Especially you, Lucille. Oh, thank you, sir. And, uh, Stephen... Um, yeah? Do you know so much about American history that you think it's unnecessary to do your homework? Oh, I had something, uh, I was doing something else that night. I couldn't do my homework. Like what? I had to wax my surfboard. <laughs> well, good for you. I'm glad to know you weren't wasting your time foolish. <laughs> now then. Can anyone tell me if there were ever any occasions when foreign troops fought on American soil? Hmm? Yes, Lucille? Uh, yes, sir. During the Revolution and the War of 1812, British soldiers fought here. 
Correct. Oh, and also the Hessians. That's right. And uh, who were the Hessians? Uh, Lucille? They were German mercenary soldiers hired by the British to fight against the colonists in the revolution. Right again. Lucille, I must compliment you. You certainly know a lot about early American history. She should. She lived through most of it. <laughs> Sarcasm, Stephen. Perhaps if you followed Lucille's example and studied, you'd be much better off. Uh. <laughs> hey, hey, Johnny. Huh? Look. What's that? Itching powder. Itching powder? What are you going to do with it? Well, there's a certain redhead who's just itching to learn. Well, today she's going to learn something new. Oh, gee, I don't think you ought to do it. Why not? It's good for a few laughs. Well, look, you just take a pinch of this stuff, you stick it back down her back, and she, she goes crazy. It'll be funny. Itch. Here she comes. <laughs> Hi, Lucy. Oh, hi, Steve. Look, uh, I want to apologize for the way I've been chopping at you lately. Oh. All right. Yeah, I haven't been very nice, and, well, I'd like to make a fresh start. Well, fine, Steve. We'll start from scratch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, we'll start from scratch. of Hamlet. Does anyone know the opening lines of Hamlet's soliloquy? <laughs> yes, you see. Uh, I memorized the entire soliloquy. Oh. <laughs> All right, now quiet down. That's wonderful, Lucy. Now, will you recite it for us, please? Yes, ma'am. Um, to be or not to be. That is ah, the question. <laughs> uh, whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or, or to those, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, <laughs> and by opposing end them, to die, to sleep no more, and by a sleep to say we scratch. <laughs> We end the heartaches and the vows and that flesh is heir to. It is a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. <laughs> this morning. I think you're despicable. Oh, now, wait a minute. No, Patty's right. That was a mean thing to do. But I was... You've on... picked on her ever since she's been here. Oh, but All you she's did... trying to do is get an education, and that's pretty hard for somebody her age. Well, then she's okay, too. She found out it was you who put the itching powder down her back, but she didn't think on you. Okay, okay, enough already. As far as I'm concerned, you are a creep. Yeah, come on, kids. Let's get away from him. He may be contagious. But... Now, wait a minute, gang. Johnny! Hi, Steve. Oh. Oh, hi, Lucy. Uh... Aren't you mad at me? Well, it wasn't a very nice thing to do to me, but I realized it was just a teenage prank. You know, Steve, you may find it hard to believe, but I was once a teenager myself. Hey, hey, you are really okay. Thank you. 
And you're pretty smart, too. Me? Smart? Oh, are you kidding? My boss, Mr. Mooney, says that I majored in stupidity. <laughs> well, I think you're smart. Thank you. You know all the answers, and oh, I sure don't. Well, you could know the answers, too, if you just study. And you know something, Steve? You better start studying. The final exams are only two weeks away. Uh, I goofed away the whole term. It's too late to start studying now. Never too late to get an education. Now, look, I'll tell you what. I'll help you, if you like. I I'll study with you. We'll study together. Well, gee, that'd be great. And, and if I pass, I'll make it up to you. I'll, uh, I'll, uh... I'll take you to the senior prom. <laughs> oh, Steve, thank you, but I couldn't go to the prom with you. I'm old enough to be your sister. <laughs> Gee, I'd, I'd like to do something to show my appreciation. Well, there is something you could do for me. What? Scratch my back. <laughs> all the way, all the way, all the way. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the climax of our graduation exercises. It is a custom of the school to accord the honor of valedictorian to the student who has received the highest grades in the final examinations. It is my pleasure to present to you the valedictorian of our graduating class, Stephen Joseph. Uh, thank you, Mr. Potter. Uh, uh, I want to tell you how grateful I am for this honor. Uh, if I'm deserving of it, it's only because of the help I received from the faculty and from one of my fellow students. And uh, since I couldn't have done it without her, I would like to award the title of Honorary Valedictorian to Lucille Carmichael. Well, thank you, Steve. If I helped you, I'm, I'm very glad. I needed plenty of help, too. <laughs> It's been very difficult for me to graduate. I, I must admit that several times I, I wanted to quit, but I, I didn't because I didn't want to become the oldest dropout in high school history. <laughs> you know, going back to school has, has meant an awful lot to me. Not only did I learn the value of an education, but I also learned a lot about the younger generation. You know, people of my generation tend to scoff at the teenagers because of their silly fads, you know, like surfing, long-haired boys, straight-haired girls, the kooky clothes they wear. Well, now, of course, my generation was perfect. We had sensible fads like swallowing live goldfish <laughs> and seeing how many kids could be crowded into one telephone booth. <laughs> and we also sneer at the modern generation's questionable taste in music. They go for that horrible rock and roll and don't have the beautiful romantic ballads we had, like Hutsut Rawson on a Rilla Raw. Remember that? Mary's he doubts and doubts he doubts. And three little fishes in an itty bitty pool. You know, recently I ran across a statement which said, I am very worried about the younger generation. The youth of today is ill-mannered, ill-bred, and shows little respect for their elders. I fear to trust them with the future. Now, this statement was made by Socrates more than 2,000 years ago. Well, I agree with Socrates. I, too, am worried about trusting the future to the younger generation. I'm worried they will do a far better job than we did. Oh. Mrs. Carmichael. Mrs. Carmichael. Oh. Mr. Mooney, I didn't know you were here. Oh, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Congratulations. Oh, I got my diploma. Yes, you did. Uh, don't let that diploma go to your head. You'll be at the bank on time tomorrow. Oh, I got my job back. Yes, oh, you did. Thank you, Mr. Mooney. <laughs> the Lucy Show.
Lucy Show. Starring Lucille Ball. Co-starring Gail Gordon. Pleasure, Doris. You know, I don't get to see enough of you. Oh, I know. It's been ages. Well, oh, you're... oh, pardon me. But I forgot to turn on the set and I don't want to miss him. Miss who? Mr. Mooney. Mr. Mooney? Yeah. How come he's appearing on television? Well, it's a public service program and there, and Mr. Mooney is being interviewed. Yippee. We're in for a real swing in the evening. <laughs> oh. Lucy, do we have to watch him? I do. There is an old Chinese proverb that says, when boss appears on television, secretary better watch, or next day boss get new secretary. <laughs> yeah, but we're missing the slimy monster from outer space. It's a wonderful horror picture. Well, believe me, Mr. Mooney will be just as horrible. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Mooney looks pretty good on television. That's a slimy monster. I got the wrong channel. <laughs> there, there it is. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present our guest, Mr. Theodore J. Mooney. Good evening, Mr. Mooney. Good evening. My topic for tonight's discussion is the value of education in the business world. I feel that education is all important in the business world. It made me what I am today. Oh, come now. Don't blame that on education. <laughs> if I do say so myself, I have a well-rounded background. That comes from sitting on his chair all day. <laughs>